Okay, so we are going to start the next topic which is related to filter design. This is a review but because I don't have uh, information about your background so I will continue with this in the two, three lectures so that you will have an idea of filter design then we can switch to switch capacitors filter. So therefore now focus is on continuous time filters. So we will try to cover three topics. Design and synthesis of ladder filters, which are the basics of continuous time filter design. How do we do frequency transformation? Because when you do filter design, you start with a low pass filter design, then accordingly you would be able to convert it to band pass. If you do manual design, if you don't do manual design, then of course automatically you will get right from the beginning other uh, in information and the specification related to your desired filter. And then finally, signal flow graph. Uh, you may be familiar, this is a very uh, well-known terminology in control systems. To be able to design a filter or any such type of unpresent uh, linear time invariant system. So today we will look at some of the common type of filters which have been proposed many, many years ago. Maybe at least, maybe I would say two generations ago. But they are actually, because based, they are based on a very, very well and strong mathematics, still they are being used a lot in filter design. And of course, recently many more have come to the picture. But here I will start from the basic filter the first one which is the Butterworth. We will talk about other types and you can, if you are interested the students, can look at other types of filter. filters. Okay, so this is just a simple uh, presentation of four low pass filter. Right now suppose we don't know anything, okay? So just we want to show four transfer functions in the pass band. And as you observe, frequency has been normalized. Okay, so almost I can say that corner frequency of these filters are is almost 0.5, okay? Just look just as the first observation. You can see the first filter is quite flat in the pass band and then it has a transition band, a stop band. Of course, this scale is linear. If you plot it in logarithmic scale, which would be better. I got it from Wikipedia, so that it was just linear, so it doesn't matter. Right now, we are not concerned about the details. So, you can see, okay, so it doesn't show any ripple in pass band and transition band and it has almost, uh, I would say that a moderate slope for the transition from low pass to high, uh, low frequency to high frequency or pass band to stop band. The second one is showing some ripple in the pass band, but transition band is very sharp. The third one still is flat. It shows almost quite still a sharper transition band compared to the first one, but it has also some zeros in the pass band. Therefore, here really attenuation will be infinite or in fact pass uh, gain will be zero. And then finally the last one which is quite sharp but it shows ripple in both trans pass band and stop band. Therefore as you observe again this trade-off which is the principle of nature happens even in the mathematics, the mathematical equation. If you want to at achieve a very sharp transition, you have to tolerate repel. And then if you want to avoid repel, you should tolerate a slow transition. Therefore, accordingly, we can develop different polynomials or mathematical functions which will implement this type of transfer functions. Okay, now the first one, which is maximally flat, is called Butterworth. And these are usually name of people who have developed these transfer functions. The second one is Chebyshev type 1. If I don't say type 1, means type 1. And Chebyshev type 2 
and elliptic filters. So these are four examples. So now, well, how do we define last lecture? In fact, last to last lecture, I started uh, giving an example so that you will learn as I continue with the example. So I will continue with the example, but this is just for your information. Now we will come back to some example and then see how these two are related. Okay, if you remember, I told you when we want to start with a transfer function, when we want to start with a transfer function, magnitude of a transfer function, we will explain it as a function of another function. We call it kj omega and this actually shows how much loss do we have. For example, as you notice, we may have zero in the stop band. When we have zero means this magnitude of kj omega is infinite. Therefore, if I have loss infinite loss at a frequency say omega 1 this means that I will have zero magnitude of transfer function at omega equal to omega in other words omega equal to omega 1 belongs to my zeros or zeros of my transfer function if they are of course imaginary so, and if loss is zero, as long as we are talking about normalized passive transfer function, then I will have maximum transfer function. That's why, because zeros and pole of this function contribute, in fact, to the magnitude performance of this filter transfer function, this is a very convenient way to explain all mathematical functions. And in fact, all these type of functions like Butterworth, Chebyshev and others have come based on this kj omega. So Butterworth developed one type of kj omega or ks polynomials, Chebyshev developed another type and so on. So when we have, we want to design a filter, what we want always, we want to know how much will be the maximum attenuation. We want in fact to get some maximum attenuation in the passband with some ripple if it's possible, if it is allowed and attenuation in the transition band and of course with a proper group delay. Therefore, it depends whether group delay is important or not. So how do we start? Always we have some information about these frequencies as, we, as I told you like we know what is the frequency at which I define a boundary for passband. Therefore, this will be my passband. And I know a frequency at which I define a boundary for stop band. So I define it as omega stop. And between omega c and omega stop, I will have my transition band. Therefore, I may want to, these two to be very close. Therefore, I want a sharp filter. So, A very simple polynomial that you can start with will be omega to the power n. And the reason I use capital omega is because I want to normalize frequencies so that we will design with corner frequency or three, minus 3 dB frequency or whatever we call it, minus 3 minus 3 dB normalized frequency to 1. Therefore, it's better to use omega, then you will denormalize everything. So now maximum attenuation in the passband and minimum uh, attenuation in the pass, uh, stop band is given. Therefore, if you look at this, this is a low pass uh, and loss increases as frequency increases. Therefore, if you replace it here, we will get a low pass transfer function. Effectively, this is the simplest one and in fact Butterworth started from this. In 
In general, you can define kj omega square of course with a now it is capital epsilon is a parameter accordingly you can define different by for each value of epsilon you will get different types of losses the reason is epsilon is just like a parameter if you want to increase loss, you will increase epsilon. If you want to have less loss, you will reduce epsilon and then accordingly you can control loss in the stop uh, pass back. So it's just like a parameter for the design. But what is important is this. For example, if you keep epsilon 1 and f omega is equal to omega, you will reach to Butterworth. Butterworth is maximally flat. It doesn't show any ripple. As you see, there is no, nothing to lead to ripple. Because you, you, what is repel? Repel means that you will have maxima and minima in the passband. But here we won't have. Now, when we want to design, therefore we want to achieve this. Now your question will be, okay, how I can relate this to H J omega and how I can implement H J omega from, um, how I can implement the filter or synthesize the filter from H. First of all, it is not possible to synthesize filter from H directly. Therefore, we need to get something else. So, we will start with ladder filters and then see how in ladder filters we are able to implement such type of loss. So, this is an example. We want to achieve such type of loss in an LC ladder filter. What is LC ladder filter? This is the simplest type of filter, totally passive. And it is in the form of a ladder. And finally, it is terminated to a resistor. At the input also, we have a voltage source with some output resistance. Okay. Okay, first question might be, okay, in CMOS technology, usually we are not terminating uh, filter to a resistor. Usually we have a load capacitor. So we will show that also. But this is used not only in um, analog filters. It is heavily used. I mean, it is the basic of microwave filter design also and other filter design, where actually you are terminating the entire filter to a 50 ohm impedance. Therefore, we start from that terminology, then we will reach to filters which don't have, in fact, resistive load. So, I cannot develop this transfer function, this simple filter directly from H, but I can do it if I know input impedance. Then it is possible to do. So, I give you now the way we have to reach from HS to K. So, there is a quite a strong theory behind that. I will try to cover a little about it and uh, so that it won't take time from us. Okay. So, what do we do? Essentially, what we do is we see how this K can be related to Z. Therefore, the only way we want to reach to the synthesis, we want to relate this k omega and z omega. And in other words, if I can replace it by s, I want to see how I can derive z in s from ks, if I know ks. So here I will write the equations. How do we do it? So I consider ks is a transfer function and for Ks we consider the transfer function will be first we start with Hs therefore Hs has some Ns upon Ds okay and then I want to develop Ks okay so then what will be numerator what will be denominator so Hs is equal to 
I write it in this way. You know, if I replace S by J omega, you will get magnitude the square of J omega, H J omega. Therefore, I write it in this way. In general. And then if I replace by J omega, I will get the same relation. And then on the other hand, it can be proved. I don't write it here, but it can be proved. By the way, this K and this H are real functions, means all coefficients are real numbers. Therefore, K star S is equal to K minus S. Okay. So, we can simply replace S star, H S star, or sorry, H star S. We have to, re we can replace it by minus S. Can we prove that this relation is valid for this type of two-port network? Okay, so this is a two-port. You are familiar with two-port. This is a linear time invariant two-part. The same thing that I told you last time. So for a linear time invariant two-port with two termination of Rs and Rl, this relation is valid. Basic filter books have a proof of this. I have written the proof. If I get time, today I will write it for you so that you will see how this relation has come. What is rho? Rho is the reflection coefficient. Uh, see, this is the port, right? You know that we have some concept of reflection in transmission line. So, essentially is Z in S minus Rs, Z in S plus Rs. This reflection characteristic function determines if a transmit, we have a transmission line a wave arrives, whether it will propagate through transmission line, whether part of it will reflect or the entire pulse will reflect. If Z in and R s are same, therefore if we terminate it with R s, means that the transmission line is defined in such a way, this is suppose a transmission line, we transmit a wave here, if the input into dance which is in fact the characteristic impedance of the line. This is equal to the same impedance we observe from source. Then there is no reflection because this reflection coefficient is zero or reflection characteristic is zero. So this is called rho s. Then it can be proved this rho s is related to k in this way. So now problem is very easy. Just if we have proper k, you cannot define any k, by the way. Because if you start defining some k, this polynomial that you define for k should have some specific properties. Because after all, this z in should lead, lead to positive values of uh, inductor and capacitor. This is called positive real function. So I don't want to enter into that positive real functions and then what are the conditions so that we can get the positive values. But then you will see all type of polynomials like Chebyshev or Butterworth, which are defined for Ks, they have this property. It means always you will get positive values for these components. Therefore, physically, stable, we are able to synthesize. So now these two are very important equations. Accordingly, we can get it. So now what we will do, essentially, what is the flow for the uh, synthesis. I will write it as a consolidated flow here in general. 
first some a specification is given to you then accordingly you get some transfer function according to your specifications from tables these tables are available as a reference for any filter design either Chebyshev, Butterworth or any other sort of it. So now you will have some HS. And accordingly, you will have some loss function or loss characteristics which are given by this K. And this K is in fact the polynomial of those filters, the filter you have chosen. For example, you may have chosen elliptic filter because it's very sharp and accordingly you will take corresponding to that filter. And then we have this. So because as you saw here we have a factor of 4 Rs upon Ra. Therefore that, that only is a point that we need to normalize H so that this will be 1. So I will define H in j omega is equal to 4 rs upon rl at j omega. This, this is just to, to get rid of this coefficient. Okay, so therefore now I can simply write according to the relation we had here. So, according to this relation between rho and k, if I normalize h, I will reach to this relation. Therefore, if you have h, you can get rho and from rho you will get z. This is simple. Now we will see how we do it practically. So I will give an example with Butterworth filter. So coming back to Butterworth filter, suppose if I choose order 3, what do I mean from order 3? Means that now your kj omega will be, Suppose epsilon is equal to 1, usually for Butterworth is 1, it's omega to the power 6, right? Square. So now I write it Ks into K minus S is equal to, you know S is equal to J omega. So instead of omega, I will write S upon J. Therefore, it will be epsilon is 1. I don't use epsilon. S upon j to the power 6. Now, I can write it in this form. S to the power 3 into minus S to the power 3. In this way, I separate Ks and K minus S. Now, I have Ks. Okay. So, Ks is equal to S3 upon 1. Means denominator is 1 and numerator is S to the power 3. Now, what is HS? Coming back to this relation, HS is 1 plus HS into H minus S is 1 upon 1 plus KS into K minus S. So this from table you will get, right? Because this is Butterworth. N is equal to 3 and Ks is equal to this. Therefore, by considering this and filter is Butterworth, I have just used tables, okay? So in tables, polynomial is given. Hs is equal to S3 plus 2S squared 
plus 2 is I will show you all these things Therefore, denominator, now we want to get uh, HS, uh, we want to get rho S. So, one thing I tell you before going to this, if I write HS equal to NS upon DS, and if I write, I want to derive this, right? This, for example, depends on the type of filter we choose, but we will give it some, um, general transfer function, okay? <coughs> I write it, I would say that denominator of Ks will be numerator of Hs. Do you know why? Look at this relation, yeah? It will come to the numerator. Therefore, numerator of Hs is denominator. It is also obvious, right? We told, if I have infinite loss, means a pole, for Ks, that will be 0 for Hs, means 0 transmission in the pass, in the stop band. Therefore, these two are equal. So, what is F hat S? Now, we also had one more relation which was related to rho S. And if I normalize, this also will go away and then I will get this relation that I wrote here. I will write it here. to have everything here. Okay, so then you notice we have now this and this will be some function, right? And because already we have polynomials, therefore we have f hat upon n and this n is common and denominator is obtained. So, now we want to reach from H to rho, right? And this relation is valid. Now, if I consider again some arbitrary, uh, now, okay, now the question is, can I consider again arbitrary transfer function for rho or not? If I replace Hn, which is a function of Ns upon Ds, right? It is Ns upon Ds. If I replace it here, then I will get some explanation for numerator and denominator of rho also. For rho, I will get rho s is equal to this hat f hat s on ds. This can be shown. Okay, so now this we here we have h s and k s in our example, right? In the example. So here, ns is equal to 1, ds is equal to s3 plus 2, s2 plus 2, s plus 1, and this was f hat s upon ns. As you notice, both are equal. Therefore, rho s will be a hat s upon ds. This you can derive for yourself. It's easy to get it. So I replace a hat s is s3 upon s3 plus 2s2 plus 2s plus 1. So now I have this reflection characteristic transfer function. Now what I should do is just to get ZE. Now getting ZE is easy, right? Because ZE is just 1 plus rho s upon 1 minus rho s. If you write ZE versus rho s, it is easy to see it will be like this. So now it can be shown that, okay, just you replace rho s by this, it will be ds plus f hat s upon ds minus f hat s. 
so I will replace therefore z in finally will be 2s3 plus 2s2 plus 2s plus 1 divided by 2s2 plus 2s plus 5 done right so now we have to input impedance of the ladder now we want to get values now it's a very interesting thing to get the values what you do you can write it in this way what is the maximum power here 3 what is maximum power in the denominator 2 ratio of coefficient 1 you exclude s therefore you will have s 2 upon 2 i don't write plus right remaining part right it will be s plus 1 upon 2s2 plus 2s plus 1. Now, so this will be 2s3, 2s2, s plus s plus 1. Correct. Now you reverse it. Okay, so therefore you write it in this way. 2s2, plus 2s plus 1 upon s plus 1. Now again do the same thing, right? So therefore, you will get s plus 1 upon, now this will be 2s. And the remaining will be 1 upon s plus 1. So now this is very easy, right? First one is an inductor, second one is a capacitor, again inductor, again capacitor. So, we can get the ladder. So, Z in S is equal to S plus 1 upon 2S plus 1 upon S plus 1. So, how do we start? It's a risk combination, right? So, this was input port connected to RS and V in. So, this is input port and Z in is the impedance which is observed from this input port. So, we start from input port. It's an inductor with a value of 1. Then, 1 plus, therefore, this is Impedance, it's not impedance, it's admittance. Therefore, this will be, 2S will be in the form of SC. Therefore, you have a capacitor with the value of 2. Now, coming back, again, this will be impedance. And finally, it's a resistor with the value of 1. Right? Done. So now easily now, if I know my, for example, I want to design a third order, Butterworth filter, this will be the filter. And if I get V out upon V in, I will get to transfer function. Notice what we did. Here we have normalized everything. Therefore, afterwards we have to denormalize it. So, the t in the tables, all values are given for RL of equal to 1. That's why the value I wrote here for butter words is for R, RL equal to 1. And for corner frequency of 1 again. Therefore, everything is normalized and we will denormalize. So, this was a simple flow of design. And of course, as you see, it's very systematic. Of course, your question now might be, okay, so why RLC or LC? Because this is not actually implementable in, uh, I mean, at least it's not cost effective if you want to implement it in CMOS technology. That is correct. The point is, now there are ways to implement these filters. What we do is, we use signal flow graph, we develop signal flow graph of this ladder, and then from signal flow graph, we develop the active 
equivalent of this filter. And active equivalent again can be in different ways. You can use active RC, you can use uh, gyrotor to impl implement L, you may use GMC filters and others. So uh, in general, there are infinite ways to implement. But of course, in applications like microwave, even they may use passive components with proper inductors. So now we come back to the um, explanation of this type of just for your information, I have shown some of the ball locations. If you remember, if you come back to your notes, when I wrote for um, Butterworth's example, or there's three, Ks was S to the power three, right? Therefore, if we write Hs, which will be one plus one plus Ks, actually uh, the poles that we observe, we all will be on a circle with the magnitude of or radius, uh, radius of 1. The reason is because when you don't do it every in this slide, if you notice, Ks is s to the power 3, right? Now, s to the power 3 is equal to minus 1, will be the pole, right? Therefore, all poles will be on the circle with radius 1. So, now all poles, as you see, what for epsilon equal to 1, all poles are on the circle with the radius of 1 and this is for n equal to 5 and they are separated by the magnitude of pi upon n in radian per second. Now in Chebyshev, again th there is no z 0 here, you see this doesn't have any 0, therefore only as omega equal to 0, we have normalized transfer function with the magnitude 1. In Chebyshev, we can have different values of epsilon as we, epsilon 2 is greater than epsilon 1, which is the black one, okay. As you increase epsilon, your poles will be closer to J omega, your magnitude of ripple will increase, but you will get better uh, transition. And again, this is an all pole filter. You don't have any zero. In Chebyshev type 2, these poles actually are not now, are, are, will, are be even outside the, the circle. Therefore, now real part of the pole has increased in contrast with Chebyshev type 1. But now there are zeros also. Therefore, you will have uh, infinite loss really at a stop band, at some frequencies. Now, how this location of poles and zeros change the properties of filter? First of all, Butterworth is maximally flat because it doesn't have any ripple and essentially it is based on this assumption that the first and the n orders of uh, um, derivative will be close to zero. There is no zero in the stop band and there is no ripple in the pass band and as well as the stop band. In Chebyshev, you see, you saw, there is ripple in the pass band, there is no zero. Transition band was narrower and therefore what happens is because of narrower transition band and the ripple, the group delay is not as good as water was. Essentially, these two have trade off with each other. Coming back here, when you have a faster transition, specifically if you look at the frequencies at the vicinity of transition band, here your phase will change a lot. Now we will see how group delay changes. Therefore, group delay will be weaker compared to Butterworth. And as you see, this appears, this in fact, appears as we shift poles from this circle into the area inside the circle. Means that Q of poles actually has increased. Q of pole is defined as the real part of pole divided by imaginary part of the pole. So now poles have more Q, right? When poles have more Q, means that uh, the amount of contribution in the phase will increase. Therefore, it will show more sensitivity to the frequency in the phase domain. 
That is the reason it's group delay is worse or poor compared to butter worse. Now in Chebyshev type 2, which is based on Chebyshev type 1, in fact, uh, if you put polynomial of Chebyshev, uh, C polynomial of Chebyshev is known as Cn. Now if you make it Cn square upon 1 plus Cn square, you will get inverse Chebyshev. Now, the, the, because it is reversed, therefore poles actually will come out. Now here, uh, you will get less Q for the poles. And therefore group delay improves. And another benefit is it has zeros in a stop band. Elliptic filter is elliptic because all poles uh, will be on an ellipse. It has repel in the pass band, it has zeros in the stop band, but it's very, it has very narrow transition band. But of course, because of this, it has the poorest group delay. It's very sharp, but group delay is very poor. So it depends how you want to design and what is important for you, whether distortion is, phase distortion is important, magnitude distortion is important, sharpness is important, you have adjacent channel, you want to discriminate them very well, therefore it depends whether Q of filter should be very high or not. And there is one more filter which is Bessel filter, which is very similar to Butterworth's. Essentially Bessel filter, you know, is a fungus. What is the Bessel filter? Bessel filter started from e to the power s. If you have e to the power s, if you replace it s by j omega, you will get e to the power j omega. This magnitude is constant at all frequencies and phase is linear, right? Therefore, it's effectively, it's like a all-pass filter with linear phase. But now if you expand it with Taylor series, get n, first n or uh, polynomials, then you will get the same. So Ks is based on e to the power s, linear expansion of e to the power s. Therefore, it will be very flat and even transition band will be wider than Butterworth's. As Butterworth's, it doesn't have any zero, poles are very low Q, means that uh, real part of pole compared to imaginary part is very large. And therefore, what happens is it will show a very good um, group delay. But it's not very good if you want to have a filter with a very good Q. So here you will see a comparison for three filters and these are three bandpass filters. So one is Bessel, one is Butterworth and one is Chebyshev. You see how they are changing. So BL means Bessel, BH means Butterworth and C means Chebyshev. So group delay as well as magnitude is shown. So if you look, Butterworth is flat, okay, so this the middle one, you know, maximally flat, but with not very sharp transition bands. The cell has better flatness, as you see, it expands like this. But in transition band is very of a very low slope. Therefore, it's not at all good for a high Q filter or even medium Q, I would say. And then finally, this is Chebyshev filter C, which is showing some repel on the top, a small part. Repel here is very small, 0.5 dB. Therefore, in this scale, this is minus 10 dB. It is not observable. So there is a small repel here and a small repel here. And then it comes down. So it has better, much better transition sharpness. Now look at the uh, group delay. You see group delay for the cell is quite low, right? In, the, in this scale, it is around eight. Then we reach to Butterworth. Butterworth is the middle one. As you see, I have put this pH there. It's, this is Butterworth. This one. 
And look at the picture. It shows the peak exactly at close to the transition frequency, transition band. As I said, because at that point you have a sharp transition, phase changes a lot. Phase is very sensitive to frequency. That's why its group delay is the worst, among others. Now, how do we design? This was an example. How do we design? When we want to design, we know characteristic of the filter. Therefore, as you saw in the example for Butterworth filter, we need to reach finally to Z in S. So, to get the trans order of the filter, even there are design tables and the plots which are showing you how these values will change with the order of filter. For example, if I can connect to internet, okay, already I have opened this page. Let us go to Butterworth and Wikipedia. Look, for example, this is a plot. Okay, you see. It shows how sharpness changes how you increase order of filter. <coughs> and exact values are specified. Therefore, you don't need to know anything. And this is the omega upon omega c that we use for normalization. And G0 is just the gain. If you are talking about passive filters, G0 is 1. So all these tables are available. Now, what are your references? References will be either a filter book, all textbooks, they have these tables. Or you can use some uh, tools like MATLAB. In signal processing toolbox in MATLAB, you can design filters, right? You can give a specifications and then you can get. But I don't recommend it like directly to use it without knowing what you are doing, right? Because, for example, one thing always you can do instead of looking using a tool directly uh, you can use this uh, pole zero information polynomials but one thing you do first you decide about order of filter just by having information about this uh, transfer function or loss plots like what you have i have shown you in wikipedia means as you change n it shows you how much attenuation you will get at this particular frequency. Therefore, suppose if you want to get, say, like in the first uh, mini project, I have told you like, we want to have minus 60 dB, I think, minus 60 dB attenuation at 2 megahertz frequency, right? Therefore, that, and we want to have, for example, minimum attenuation, not more than, say, 0.1 dB in the passband. Therefore, if you look at plots, you will see where you will get a proper order. Coming back to this, simply, for example, if I want to design here, suppose, if you get order of 3, okay, at this frequency, which is 10, this is normalized frequency, as 10, I will get minus 60 dB, okay. So suppose if I want to design and my corner frequency is normalized to 1 and then I want at 10 to have minus at least minus 60, therefore I would say that order of filter should not be more, less than 3. It should be at least 3. So in this way you will be able to decide about order of filter. Very simple. So you decide about order of filter by yourself. Therefore in your report also you mention how did you derive the order of filter. When you derive the order of filter, the remaining part is straightforward because everything is given. Even if here, if you look, all these polynomials are given for different orders. So simply you can use it, right? And this is the implementation and even value of C and L are given. The way I continued, it was a numerical example. They have given directly uh, in the form of parameters. And N is or order of filter, and K is the parameter. So you will get value of K. Suppose if order is 3, therefore you will have 3 components. 
and so on. Therefore, k changes from 1 to 3. So coming back to this, so therefore you will get complete information about location of pole and zeros, polynomials and even component values. But you need to know that what is theory behind that, means that don't forget all this theoretical um, and interesting part which is behind this filter implementation. There are some tools also, online tools, other than MATLAB. I have seen. Even there are some calculators. For example, one website which is RF Cafe. You may find it. RF Cafe has essentially an online calculator. So that you can, uh, I think it is downloadable also. Uh, in, and it matches Excel. So you can use it so that, for example, you can get different plots. Here. Suppose you want to see how would be a Chebyshev 2 with order 3 with epsilon 0.1. How would be the uh, phase characteristics and uh, magnitude characteristics. So that means that you can do a lot with all these available sources. Because this is a well established theory, you don't need to do anything specific. But you understand what you are doing. Don't do anything with blind eyes when you want to design a filter. Okay, therefore in your report you explain exactly how this is done. And actually it's fun. When I had this course, of course, we didn't have access to internet at that time. But it was actually fun for us, like this decomposition and then get values. You know, one interesting point is, um, you didn't ask. I expected somebody to ask. Um, you know, if uh, in this relation, Relation of rho s versus z in, and in fact rho s versus k. It is, uh, if you write, there is one more option also. For example, uh, the reason is I want to tell you like this actually can have two designs. Uh, it can be shown, in fact, for rho s, you will get two cases. Because uh, in the definition, we started from loss function and we reached effectively to this relation. This is just as an interesting thing you can derive too. So this was the relation we reached. Coming back to frequency domain. Right, but then we replace it by S. Uh, the point is, when you want to get rho, you can get rho or you can get minus rho, right? Both of them will valid here. Therefore, if you get minus rho, then the relation we wrote for Z in was that I used was 1 plus rho S <laughs> upon 1 minus rho S. But in fact, it's possible to you get in uh, the reverse also. If you get the reverse, means that if you use minus rho here, therefore rho will be minus rho, right? Because here just it's a minus, it doesn't affect on uh, magnitude. So when you have rho s into rho minus s, you can multiply both by minus 1. Therefore, now you will have minus rho s. Now if you replace it by minus, then means that you will get another z in. So I will call it z in 1 s, z in 2 s. And actually if you do this, now you can try it for this example. So you derive this. You will get a dual of this network, which will be the second answer for this design. Okay, so this is like a, a small assignment. You do it by yourself. Now, how do we do denormalization?
Any question till now? Because now at least this part is over. Do you have any question or anything that you need to know? I think this would be enough as a review because the remaining part is based on this theory. There is nothing specific in it. But just the different transfer functions, different polynomials, anybody has developed something different. And then how to see when you Q of pole changes, how your phase distortion changes. These are important uh, things you need to learn. And then, now we want to denormalize. So, uh, RL is equal to 1, right, in most of the tables which are given. So, you can use uh, and you have, of course, 1 minus 3 dB frequency, which is defined. Usually, we call it omega C, it might not, need, not be exactly minus 3 dB. For example, coming back to this transfer function, like suppose in Butterworth, if you have, for example, minus 0.2 dB, and this corresponds to 1 in Butterworth, and then you want to convert it to, say, some frequency omega c. Therefore, we call it omega c, right? It need not be minus 0.3 dB. It can be any frequency that you desire and you define your uh, passband based on that frequency. So, that this omega c means reference frequency. So, when we want to denormalize, we, we denormalize based on this omega c. Therefore, we define two factor for denormalization, one for L, and for 1 for C. So when you get this LR and CR, then you can denormalize all values. Any C, I call it CI, is equal to CI normalized into CR. And any LJ is equal to LJ normalized into L. So in this way, you will get values of C and real values of C and and one more important point also, because Rs was equal to 1. If Rs is not equal to 1, there is just minor change here. If Rs is not 1, um, one more thing, you don't, don't forget this Hn, S is normalized Hn. If RS is not, so this was normalized, HS into uh, 4 RS upon RL, right? You just double check with your notes. 4 RS upon L, right? Divide or multiply? Multiply, okay? 4 RS upon L, RL. And if RS is not 1, therefore Z in will be rs into 1 plus rho s, 1 minus rho s, or it can be rs into 1 minus rho s, into 1 plus rho s. So this is the effect of rs, effect of rl, and omega c is captured here. Okay, so at least we have something which is done till now. Now what remains? What else is remained? Now what to do with this filter? There was one more important point, right? This filter cannot be used in this way, in CMOS technology. We need to convert it to an active filter. And to convert it, we need to use signal flow curve. Therefore, now we need to see how we can convert this ladder filter to a signal 
flow graph and then convert it to an active filter. So what is signal flow graph? In a signal flow graph, you may be familiar. Is there anybody who doesn't know what is signal flow graph? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't look at this way. How many? Okay. See, suppose you have a linear system. Okay, this can be any system. I don't talk about any circuit or any control system or mechanical system. Because it's linear, you can use Laplace transform to show the system. Suppose Gs into Hs, which is feedback. Okay, Gs is feed forward. We have input Xs, output Ys. To simplify this presentation, we use two things. One is a summing node and a branch. So we have just two symbols and then we can use these two symbols to make a graph and show the system. Therefore we write xs, this is a summing point. If I don't put any number on a branch, means the transfer function from left side of the branch to the right side of branch, which show two variable, for example, V and W, is 1. If I put a number, means that the ratio is A, means W upon V is A, or V multiplied by A is W. And V and W are two nodes of this branch, which shows two nodes in the graph, and actually they are two variables of the system. So now I will have XS starts from this node goes to a summing node. Here I will have gs. It goes to y. And I have a feedback here. Hs. Now in the case that these values are not a function of frequency, g and h will be just two numbers. So now it's very simple, right? So, if it simplifies the way we show a linear time invariant system in Laplace today. Now, we use the same terminology to show this uh, ladder filter. To the filter we designed. Similar to that. I think this is the same thing. I remember I made it for the same filter. the filter. Yeah, it's, in fact, it's pi, uh, T. It's a T filter. Like, it is a, in the form of T. Then I have RL, say L1, L2. So, after denormalization, you have this. So, still I have not talked about other filters, okay? Band pass or high pass. Now, this is a low pass filter. What we do, we define all variables we have in this LTI system. We out, I have IC, I have two current, I2, I1, I have a voltage across L2, T2, I have a voltage across L1, call it V1. I have a voltage across capacitor Vc and I have a voltage across this resistor, I call it V1, no I have V1, I call it Vs. Okay, now what we do is, how many variables we have, voltage I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and three currents, and of course this is I out, if I want to specifically mention I out. So, what I will do, 
I will make a set of nodes because these are all my variables. I out, I two, I one. Oh, I see is here, so I will make I see between I two and I one. And correspondingly, I will make other values like between uh, then I two correspondingly, I will have V two below it. I C I will have V C. I one I will have V one, and of course here I have V out below I out. And here I will have V S, and then finally V. And because I have a specified V S, therefore I specify I S. We try to make a corresponding pairs. That makes life easier. Okay, so this is the way we start. Now look at the equation. We just uh, make a transfer function. For example, I two and I out are one, right? So the signal flow graph will be simply. Here will be one branch, and then how I reach from I out to V out, it will be one upon R. Which one? As I two, we get uh, no. They are in the same direction. I two is equal to. It's same. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry. Yes, this is R. So as I out, we reach to V out. Now, correct. Now we are coming to the next one. How we reach from V two to I two? One upon S two. And then what is V two? V two is. V C minus V out. Therefore, from V C, we go with branch one, and here it will be minus one. Now, from I C, now see I C is equal to I one minus I two. Therefore, I two will be one from I two. From I one, I go with a branch with a gain of minus one on top of. Again, how I reach from I C to V C? One upon V C. Now going from V C to V one. V one from I one. How I reach from V one to I one? V one I one is one upon S N. See, this is V two, which is equal to V C minus V out. V two is the voltage across inductor. Okay, so K V L. I S is equal to I one. If I define V S in this direction, then I S minus R S will be V S, and then V S will be okay. So sorry, I have to define this node voltage. So I call it. Um, V three, V three. So, no, sorry, this was V one, and here I will have V three. 
Okay, I will correct this one. Then now, V C minus V three will be V one. In fact, V three minus V C. And again, I will write V three according to V in and I S. So from I S, I will get V S and again. So then I will re redraw it here. Yes. We don't write one. If we don't write, means it's one. I one minus I two. Okay, this is plus. Yeah, I see. Is I one minus I two correct? So this you correct, and then. See, this was your question. So one upon S L V one. Now we will have V three, which reads the node voltage. So V one is defined as V three minus V C. Therefore, this will be minus one. This will be plus one. And then I one. Again, from I one. I will get I S. Okay. Now I have V in, and then V three is equal to V in minus R S I S. Right. Therefore. I S is multiplied by the three is to be in minus R S. So this will be minus R S. Now the points which were the summation point, I will just put a circle because it sh they should be different. Okay. Essentially, we show them by this symbol, right? It's better in your uh, drawing. You can replace them all by this symbol. So these are summation points. And similarly here for IC and here for V3. So these are summing points. Now see what happens is whatever we have is either a summer or is an integrator. Therefore, it's very easy to convert it to active filters using integrator. Any question for signal program? So, did you understand how it is? It's very simple. But there are some properties of signal program. I don't mention, but then it helps you, like if you want to simplify. For example, if you have A, B, and then from X, Y, Z, you can convert it to X, Z with A, B. Right? You may have feedback, like what we have here x to y and again from y to x and then some other input say z this is y and if you want you can remove y and then correct this coefficient 
So there are many properties like I can convert this to this if I don't uh, care about y and suppose this is a, this is b, this is c, right? So x, x is equal to cz plus by and y is equal to ax, right? Now if I replace x is equal to cz plus ab abx. In other words, x is equal to cz upon 1 minus ab. Therefore, I can remove and then replace 1 or minus ab. So, 1 minus ab. These are just examples like how we simplify signal programs because they are all real and they are all linear. This is just as an abs uh, something in the margin. It's not as a main part of the lecture, but this is just to know that there are many properties on the signal flow graphs, how to remove nodes and do manipulation. Okay, so now I can con use a simply integrator and then replace all nodes. One thing interesting you can see is, look at for example here, you have Vc, right, minus V out, multiplied by 1 upon SL2, right? If you look at a simple integrator, this is AC ground. By the way, this is not reference, this is just AC, so it is AC. And this is V in, this is V out. Transfer function of this integrator and this transfer function 1 upon SC or 1 upon SL are very similar, right? Because here you can write V out is equal to minus 1 upon SC. V. Only difference is here you see a negative sign that you don't see here. Here you see a resistor that you don't see. Therefore, we need to do some two things. First of all, we need to multiply all branches by some value that will show our reference resistor. We should have some reference resistor in the circuit. So that accordingly, we can use these values as values of capacitors only. And the second point is, we have to be careful about this negative sign. So somehow, we have to implement this negative sign. So to do this, uh, I don't write again, again it will take time. Uh, see, if I want to multiply, how I can do it? Suppose if I want to multiply by some coefficient or some uh, value of R, in such a way I get RC, right? If I don't multiply, so means that here, value will be c therefore r should be 1 right i can say in this way like r can be 1 but at the end also i will have r so there are two things either we can say r is equal to 1 but if we say r is equal to 1 it may not be a practical thing because first of all value of c might be uh, too large or value of r is equal to 1 might be too small therefore it's better we put some factor of r and then accordingly we decide about value of R and C, we normalize. So now if I multiply, say for example, starting from here. If I want to multiply by R, I have to be careful how these values will change. Uh, for example, if I multiply this part in R, see I is getting multiplied by 1 upon SC BC. If I multiply by R, I have to be careful that this value also need to be changed. Now, because see, 
What happens is this is the output of integrator. Here I have a voltage at the output of integrator. Here I have a current. I need to convert this current versus the, this also that is another point. I need to convert this current to voltage. I need to consider some proper normalization to get proper values of C. And then I have to take care of this negative sign. So three things I need to take care of and I want to realize. So here what we will do, um, we want to convert them to, we start from here. We convert them to some voltage. Therefore, what does it mean? I will multiply them by some value of R. I call it R star. This star doesn't mean conjugate. It's just a symbol. So R star and then R star. R star. If I do this, then I have to, like here, some of the properties of signal flow graph. So now you are, we are changing all by multiplying by some value. So this is linear. Therefore, I can apply it here. If I have I2 R star, it's enough if I add this here, right? Nothing changes if I add this R star here. So I can get that value. What about this? See, this is R star into IC. So this has multiplied by R star. This variable is multiplied. To get same we see, I have to divide this coefficient by R star. Therefore, it will come to the denominator. Then here it is multiplied, so this should get divided. And here also it should get divided. Now at least I have all variables V out. Now at least I have some value by which, same value of course. I can again change my, uh, which will change effective value of uh, C and L that I use. And what remains is only negative sign. Now I can use the integrator. There is one more point here. If you look in this integrator we have, we have two inputs, right? For example here, Vc and V out will make V2 and then V2 will go here. But this integrator is a single-ended integrator. So, means that I should, add, either I should make a summer and then apply to single-ended or right from the beginning, beginning I can make a differential integrator. That will be easy, right? So, one of these two we will do. So, I will stop it here. So, we will continue next session uh, regarding how now different ways of implementation of this integrator. Because this is one way of doing that. Now, differential as well as GMC. Okay, so this was a very brief, in fact, uh, this can be, if I want to expand it, it will be in at least two, three lectures uh, to talk about theory behind this uh, filter design. This part is a straightforward, but uh, what I suggest you... Uh, Look at any textbook, including this textbook that I introduced in the first lecture, regarding uh, filter design. And you start, and even on the net you will find many, many uh, tutorials for filter design. It's a very well established uh, area. So you learn the, conceptually you, you know, be convinced that you have understood. If you have not understood, then you ask questions. As I mentioned, like, Inside the class or outside in uh, morning that I have kept for your dogs. You can ask your questions so that you be clear. Then when we enter into the other modules, then you, you know, okay, how this is designed. Then we don't de define how this design is done. Okay.